This is the Technopolis report out this month by the Technopolis group and it's been commissioned by the Academy of Medical Sciences, the British Academy, the Royal Academy of Engineering and the Royal Society. And what it does is it looks at all of the EU funding coming into the UK research and innovation landscape, both to universities and also importantly to businesses. So that's the gap that this plugs. Now the overall view is this. There are three major streams that it looks at of finances coming in. The framework programmes like FP7 and Horizon 2020, the structural funds and the European Investment Bank. Now with the framework programmes the amount of money coming in has been about 0.9 billion euros per annum and that's the competitive grant system that goes both to universities and also to businesses. The structural funds are specifically for struggling regions to develop their capacity and the amount of money coming into those is 0.2 billion euros per year. And then finally, the European Investment Bank is a big old bank specialised at infrastructure and uh, research and innovation and skills and environment and providing low cost loans to those projects. And that has been loaning to the UK 0.5 billion euros per annum and we can look at the leverages of those later. So that's the overall picture 0.9 billion from the framework programs 0.2 from the structural funds and 0.5 in loans from the European Investment Bank. Now what does this do to the UK research and innovation landscape? Well overall it provides about 5% of all the funding spent in UK research and innovation. Now, if that sounds low, remember there's a lot of big businesses, long-standing big businesses in the UK that don't need additional funds from outside. So the two areas that you should look at are universities, where these funds provide 12% of the research grants contracts, and that rate is rapidly increasing with some universities more than 20% dependent, many universities more than 20% dependent on uh, these grants and contracts from the EU. But also, <clears throat> and I didn't know this before, with small businesses, 17% of the business research and development expenditure by our small businesses in this country comes from the EU. So that targeted funding has been really, really useful. Now, um, how unique are these funds? I mean, can't we just replace them on a national level is a key question also looked at here. It is the view of Technopolis that for the European Investment Bank functions and for the structural funds, these are things that we could pay for by ourselves. If we were to reclaim the money, we could just replace those nationally. I would question whether the British Business Bank has yet enough um, experience and connections and know-how to actually fill in from the European Investment Bank. But where we can all agree is for Horizon 2020, it funds certain things that are pretty much irreplaceable at the national level. So, for example, mega projects. If you look, and they do in this report, at funding from our own national sources, the average grant size from government sources um, is 0.5 million. Whereas if you look at the EU grants, especially in the societal challenges pillar of Horizon 2020, the average grant size there is pushing 3 million euros with 10 partners. So this particular fund is critical to do those big mega projects that are pan-European and sometimes global. Also, uh, another thing, and, and I didn't know this before, is that for the investigator driven awards in this country, 50% of those come from EU funding. So we're talking about Mary Curie and ERC grants there. And so all of the growth that we've seen in the last 10 years for these high value investigator driven awards, all of the growth has come from uh, those EU awards. And so if these were to get taken away and look at the situation that happened in Switzerland, that would really collapse down our um, high value investigator driven award, which actually 
attracts talent from all over the globe to come and work in the UK. So those are important considerations. The report also looks into the, um, the extra money leveraged by these funds. So for the European Investment Bank, which is targeted at leveraging funds, that 0.5 billion per annum leverages an extra billion per annum in other funds. And in terms of Horizon 2020, it cites a commission study that said for every euro spent, it leverages a further 0.74 euros in extra funding, which would mean that the six, which would mean that the 9.6 billion euros that have come in from the EU to the UK over the last 10 years have actually crowded in a total of 16.6 billion euros funding, which is a lot of additional juice over a decade. So, really good report. Uh, I would criticise one aspect, which is doesn't mention the European Fund for Structural Investment, also known as the, the Juncker Plan, which put together um, some 2 billion from Horizon 2020 and 16 billion from the EU overall, pulling in an extra 5 billion from the European Investment Fund and started up in the summer of 2015. Now, it lists a whole bunch of other uh, funds that they say are too small to be included, like Erasmus and Cosme and uh, various other streams, but it didn't mention um, EFSI, which I think is an omission, because even though it's administered by the European Investment Bank, nevertheless, um, you need to mention it separately, or if you're just including it in the European Investment Bank, you need to acknowledge that this has been extra billions that have come in over the last couple of years, which have leveraged several times their own value more. And so that would mean that the working figure of 0.5 billion per annum would then not be the case. So that's that's the only admission. Uh, that's the only omission. Otherwise, um, I think this report really does help fill out an already extremely well-developed picture about how useful EU funding has been to our research and innovation landscape to date and why we need to fight hard to preserve all of that framework.